Look how cool this is. Not just one hippo, but two hippos in the dam. The one that's closest to us looks like it's most likely a boy hippo. And then the other one at the back is a little bit smaller and is moving away from us. And that looks like a female, a girl hippo. But how cool is that? That just as Byron was wanting to show you a picture, we happened to stumble across them. And that's what's so fun about safaris is that you never know what you're going to see around the next corner, let alone in the next dam. Now, you were also talking about the size difference between hippos and buffaloes. And while it's very difficult to see how big a hippopotamus is, especially when it's covered in water, but that's their favorite place to swim. But yes, a hippo is indeed bigger than a buffalo, particularly a big hippo bull is much larger uh, than a female. Isn't that cool though? We're gonna have to watch them very carefully. Now, Zahari, you're wondering what water conditions do hippos like? Any water, lots of water, not too deep, a little bit shallow so that they can stand, because remember hippos can't swim, but they want a big dam so that if they feel as though they're in trouble, they can come to the middle and then they'll be out of harm's way. But let's watch them, because they're blowing a lot of bubbles and things. That male hippo on the left, he's not very happy. He's a little bit of a grumpy grouch this afternoon, and I'm not sure why he's so upset, but you can see as he goes underwater and he comes back up again, he lets out a big snort, and he makes a big noise. He splashes all the bubbles away, so that's also just one of the, I suppose you could say, a threat display. So maybe he's not so happy with us because we've arrived here. He could be a little bit protective over the female, which is understandable. But don't worry, boy, we are not interested in going after your girl. That is yours and all yours. But they keep going up and down because it's very deep there. So if they want to move, they've, of course, got to sink to the bottom and then walk along the bottom, move, and then pop back up again. Now, Angel, you're wondering if hippos hunt people. No, they don't. Luckily for us, however, they are Africa's most dangerous animal. And you can see one has just popped up. There it is. And uh, and the problem with the hippos, Angel, is because you get hippos all over Africa, and in a lot of parts in Africa, they don't have running water or even electricity in their homes. So they have to go to the dams and rivers to wash their clothes, to have a bath, to wash pots and pans and all those types of things, even go and get food to go fishing. And normally all these chores and things are done first thing in the morning before it gets too hot. And well, hippos, go from spending most of their day in the water to as soon as it gets a bit cooler and the sun drops down, they go out and they eat grass. So they can move quite far away from permanent water source. And then when they come back towards the dam or the river, whichever they're living in, there are often people between them and their safe haven. The water is their place where they feel the most safe. Now that's a little terrapin that you're looking at. So what happens is that people then obviously getting in between those animals and of course they get trampled which is not too great and they cause a lot of deaths unfortunately throughout South Africa. I think hippos and you've got to respect them kill more people than the big five put together. Pretty crazy hey? Pretty crazy. So you've got to be careful even in a canoe and in a boat they can be exceptionally dangerous. There we go it's popped up again. Well, Nati, now you're wondering how, how big are the hippopotamus? So a hippo can weigh, a big bull can weigh over two tons, a really, really big one, and an average weight of a female is anywhere between about 1.2 tons and one and a half tons. So it's the size of a, really, of a small car, if you had to think about it. And when they're out of water and you're lucky enough to see one out of the water, you'll think that they look like a car too. They are very long, they are very wide, but they've got short, very stubby little legs, but they can run pretty quick too. So even though it looks like because they're so big that they can't move very quickly, you'll be so surprised at how fast they can charge in the water and when they're out on land. So you've got to be very careful. And Kaylee, Jessica and Charlotte, you're wondering why do hippos have such more legs? Uh, that's just the way they designed, I suppose. They, you know, living in the water all the time, and that's where they spend most of their days to keep nice and cool, and, and obviously for safety too in the water. Uh, so they don't necessarily need long legs like a giraffe. They don't really need to run away all the time. 
I suppose it doesn't matter if you've got short legs if you live in water and you're bouncing up and down. But I'm not exactly sure. It's just how evolution has designed these hippopotamus. That's just one of those things. But they really are funny if you find one out of the water. And I haven't seen a hippo out of the water for a while, but we see it in winter when it's cooler. Now, Briash, are you wondering how, why do they blow bubbles? Um, they're not blowing bubbles for fun, I suppose. It's when they take a deep breath in, and then they move around along the bottom of the water and they come up again. They've got to exhale, so they've got to breathe out. So that is what the bubbles are being formed by. It's just that last breath of air that they're trying to get out before they take a new one. And then because they push it out quite hard, sometimes it makes the water sp spit out of their noses, which is, like, which is quite funny to watch. But they're very shy today. They keep moving away from us. Titus, you're wondering how do hippos breathe underwater? Just like how you and I would breathe underwater, we don't. We hold our breaths. So that's what a hippo does, is it takes a breath of air, then it goes underneath the water and it can hold its breath for about six minutes long, which is a very, very long time, as you can imagine. And then once that six minutes is up, but it obviously is different for a young hippo versus an old hippo, because a young hippo still needs to train its lungs for it to be able to stay underwater for such a long time. And then they push up and they have to take a big breath of air after that. You can imagine, imagine going under for such a long time, how much you'd need to breathe. You'd be doing deep breaths. There we go, one has come up. And under again. Oh, these animals are quick. Isn't that cool? But there's some birds standing behind it. And those are called water thickenies. I was surprised to see them out during the day. They're normally tucked under a shady tree. They prefer to come out at night. Now, Nicholas, you're wondering, what were you wondering? Now I've completely forgot. Megan, please, can I have the question again? Ah, do hippos play in the mud? Sorry, Nicholas. They do indeed, but not when there's lots of water around. If there's lots of water around, they prefer to stay in the big dams and the rivers. But when there isn't any water around, and it's dry and it's a big drought, which we've actually just had a huge drought, the worst drought in the last 100 years. Can you believe that there was no water around? And the hippos were actually trying to sit in the mud to try and keep themselves cool because they have a very, very sensitive skin. Remember I said that's one of the reasons why they're in the water, to keep themselves cool and also to help stop getting sunburned. So they roll around in the mud too, but that's really only when a hippo is desperate and they haven't got any other choice. Otherwise, they prefer to be able to keep their bodies underneath the water. But the sun is very, I mean, the, the mud, sorry, is very good at keeping the hippos protected from the sun. It's a natural sunscreen, and there's many, many different animals out here that use mud. So rhinos, warthogs, buffalo, hippos, sometimes elephants use it, and they all cover themselves in it so that it stops the insects from biting them. And if there are any insects on their body too, it will suffocate those parasites like ticks and mites and lice. And then they get scratched off when they scratch up against a tree. And then of course that crusty mud helps protect them from the sun. Now Gabby, you're wondering if hippos ever sneeze. That's a very interesting question. I suppose a hippo could sneeze if it wants to. Not as much as I do. I think I'm the record holder for sneezes here. Uh, but I don't think I've ever seen a hippo sneeze before. I've seen an elephant sneeze, I've seen a zebra sneeze, a lion, a leopard, a buffalo. So I'm sure that hippos wouldn't have a problem sneezing, So especially if something were to tickle their nose. See, that's what they just spend their whole days doing, going up and down, up and down, and if there's enough of them, they'll all have a sleep on each other as well. Now, Kev, 